What is going on guys? I'm Seth Thomas here, George, the coach of your San Francisco Arcaninos, here to bring you my Season 6, Week 6 match against the Borussia Dawn fans, coached by El Cizor or Lars. Um, let me get right on into his team. So he decided to bring Scizor, the Crawdon, the Mesprit, the Landorus Eye, the Alakazam, and the Vaporeon. And immediately, I think, no shame in. Thank God, because that's a threat to my team, but at the same time, it's like... Melodic set's kind of worthless now. I should have brought physically defensive. Brought specially defensive instead, but... Anyway, I'm looking at his team, and the only form of hazard removal I see is the Scizor. And I'm just thinking, okay. Lead off with my Fortress. And try to get up my rocks. And try to go from there. I see that, that my Simi Sage actually puts in a lot of work against his team. I literally Leaf Storm everything except the Scizor, and I have HP Fire for the Scizor. He has, he doesn't have the Aromatis, so my Draco Meteor's off, my Latias is going to be doing a lot of damage to his team as well. And another thing I see is that my Needle Queen can put in a lot of work in it, and if I get rid of the Vaporeon, Infernape, Fire Up, Choice Banded, Flare Blisses all day long. So, let's get right into the battle. So I decide to lead off with my, with my Fortress, and he decides to lead off with his Vaporeon. Now, Immediately I'm thinking, I'm not a defensive spread. I don't care if he goes for Scald against the burn. I really don't mind it. I'm just going to go for rocks. I want my rocks up. He goes for Scald. I don't have any bulk on my Iron Nut. And he doesn't get the burn, thankfully. So, you guys are going to see that that kind of comes into play a little bit later on in the match with me surviving hits and whatnot. But, anyway, now I think, you know what? Let's go into Simi Sage. This is the reason why I have the Simi Sage. I don't care if I get burned because I do... Not need to use my gunshot at all. He doesn't have the aromatics or the shaman. He, he he goes for the scald, and right here I go for substitute because I know he's gonna switch. But sorry, um, I know he's gonna switch, but I kind of underestimate the amount of HP that I'm taking up on my Simi Sage right here. I switch it on a scald. I go for sub. Now I have to take my life with recoil and. While it's great that I got the prediction right and everything is pretty obvious, I should have just fired off a Leaf Storm because my Simi Sage would be at 25% higher health th than it is right now, and it wouldn't be almost dead. So overall, I kind of regret going for the um, the substitute right there, but I guess it lets me get off a secondary um, hit. Actually, no, it doesn't because... Sorry. Um, here, he's, he's going to go for rocks, and I'm going to switch out right here, make the safe play, and go out into my Latias. I know I can wall the mess for it. Um, he goes for stealth rocks. I don't have the um, blanking. I don't have the defog on this set, so those rocks are here to stay, but my rocks are here to stay on his side of the field, too. I don't see a switch into Draco Meteor except for the Vaporeon. So I'm just going to drop a Draco Meteor, and then if he goes into Vapor, and I'm going to Toxic him after, and that's exactly what he does. He's going to take 12% from the rocks. Then you guys see this Draco Meteor is actually going to do a lot of damage to this Vaporeon. Um, enough to where I'm thinking he's not a special defensive set, he's a physically defensive set. Just because I do have max special attack, but I'm not modest, and I do not have a boosting item. So right here, I'm just going to go for Toxic. I don't know if he'll have the Heal Bell. I don't expect it, but it's a good way to scout his moveset and get some damage off on him. I see that he goes for Toxic as well, so I do believe he does not have the Heal Bell now as he wants to have a, a, the Wish of Protect, and this kind of sucks for me because I didn't want my Gladios to get Toxic. I didn't expect him to go for Toxic there, um, but I do see that he is weakened to a point where there's a potential that if I get a high roll on my Draco Meteor that the Toxic will take out the Vaporeon. So I decide right here, he's going to drop a Draco on him, see how much it does, and judging by the damage, I'm not going to be able to take him out with a Toxic. However, he's pressured right now. His Vaporeon is not going to leave this field with over half health, just because the Toxic will be doing 18% next turn. And if he goes for a Protect right here, which I'm assuming he's going to do, um, he kind of has to go for Protect to save his Vaporeon. He's going to end up still, he's going to recover half. You guys see he's going to bring on very low. He's going to recover to half, but he'll lose 18%. He'll be at like 35% at the end of this turn no matter what. And after that, Toxic will be doing 24%. So him trying to he heal up right now is kind of not possible because they got the Toxic off. So pretty good for me. The Vaporeon is crippled and pretty much dead now. Um, 
he is going to get the wish back and we we see that he's at like 35%, maybe 40% after this. Um, I am just going to fire off a Leaf Storm right here. Actually, no, I do predict the switch. Go for HP Fire, expecting this, the Scizor to come out. He goes into Mesprit, makes a good play, and uh, I go for HP Fire. It does about, I don't know, like 20% to him about. And right here, I kind of regret this play too. See, the Simi Sage set I made could have done so much work against this team, but I just misplayed it in my opinion. I just misplayed it a little bit, and I should have played it better. I go for Leaf Storm right here, I make the obvious play, and he makes a good switch in his scissors. It was a good play by Lauren's part, but it's very predictable, and I should have gone for an HP Fire there. Um, I actually, fortunately for me, he does in fact miss, and right here, I decide, you know what, I know he's gonna BP me. I'm going to go into my fortress, I'm going to save my Simi Sage, and I look at the BP damage, and I go, I'm in Ku Staff range. You guys know what's coming if you've seen the team builder. I'm not going boom, I'm not going for spikes, I'm going for fucking Hidden Power Fire. Let's go Fortress, getting off that Hidden Power Fire, and we do like 75% to him, and that Scizor is crippled. It can only switch in one more time on Stealth Rocks, and then my fortress survives the U-turn. And then I get switch initiative now because he's he's gonna go into Mr. Man, take 12% on this Landers Incarnate. And then I get to see what he wants to go for. He goes for knockoff right here. And I'm just thinking, you know what? I don't care if he knows that my Needle Queen can handle him. Oh. That's a different part of the battle. I I I do that later on. Um I go into Infernape right now because I know that even if he's Choice Scarf, um I can take a knockoff and I am banded, I can go for for the flare blitz however i know he's gonna switch out right here don't think he's gonna stay in and just risk like an hp ice or something that'd be kind of stupid on his part or even a fire blast you know what? i'm just gonna u-turn out as the vaporeon actually s survives the hit which i was very surprised by um this was actually probably max physically defensive vaporeon judging by how it took that choice banded u-turn um but i get a safe switch into needle queen right now as he's gonna die to toxic and this is looking pretty good for me so far. I've taken down the Vaporeon, which is the only thing stopping my my Infernape, really. Um, I've done a, little, a lot of damage t to the Mesprit and the Scizor. I just gotta take down his offensive threats now. I have to find a way to bring those things down. He's gonna go into his Crawdon right here. I don't want to stay in right now. I know a Poison Jab can't take him out. I don't think he'll go for Aqua Jet, but I can't stay in. So he's actually gonna pull a double switch right here. Expecting me to, I am assume, go into Melodic, I want to say. Um, maybe he had something to hit my Melodic, I don't know. Um, or maybe he expected like a T-Bolt or something like that. But he's going to U-turn out right here because he reveals that he is in fact Choice Scarf. I don't believe the Landers would have max speed, timid nature, um, or in this case, a jolly nature. Um, so I do assume that he, he is choice scarf um and he goes into, into mesper right now it is his least valuable pokemon it's the weakest one at, at least the scissor has access to two priority bullet punch so it can have some use later on i go into, into tarzan right here and i make the in my opinion the biggest misplay of the match i don't click flare blitz here i play safe and then i u-turn out and that this play right here i would have killed he had no switch into Flare Blitz, none at all. I would have killed the Landorus off. And I'm so mad at myself that I didn't go for the Flare Blitz. Look how much U-Turn does. It's resisted, like 30%. Flare Blitz would have easily killed, I would have not had to deal with. And here, this is where I go into Needle Queen. I don't care if he knows that my Needle Queen can take him on. I don't care at all. I can take any hit from him from this range. He just U-turns out, revealing that he is in fact Choice Scarf because in a prior game against Lars, I did go for a Choice Scarf Needle Queen. So if he assumed that I was Choice Scarf, he would not have stayed in right there if he wasn't. So right here, he U-turns he, out into Crawdon. And Lars, I know you're not going to Aqua Jet me. I know you're not going to go for that move. Um, I do Ice Punch right here because I know it'll take out the Landorus. But I know he's either going to predict my switch into Melodic and SD or just go for Knockoff. And after that Ice Punch damage, I know a Poison Drive can take him out so i just go for poison jab and take him out i play too safe around the infernape so or around the mesprit right there so 
Me going for Poison Jab right there was a good play on my part. Now, this is where things go bad. Because now he sees I'm physical. And he brings in the Alakazam. And immediately I think, okay, he has to have Substitute. How am I going to handle this Alakazam? Because a sub Alakazam actually puts in so much work against my team. And I didn't want to stay in in case he decided just not to go for Substitute. Oddly enough, I didn't want to take the risk right there. Um, my Needle Queen is too valuable to risk like that. But I see that, and then I see Psyshock, and I'm thinking... I should have been physically defensive. I over prepped for Shaman on this melodic, and now I can't take two Psy Shocks. And even if I didn't expect him to bring a Psy Shock only because my melodic was most likely going to be physically defensive, so I expected like the energy ball or the psychic instead, which I could could have taken better anyway, but he's a 75% right here. And I go into my Latias, and I have a feeling that he's going to make a switch out into Mesprit right here, so I pull a double switch. I'm behind now. This Alakazam is putting a lot of pressure on my team, and I have to figure out a way out of it, and it turns out he goes for Substitute right here. Now this is not bad for me, it's not great for me, but it's not bad for me. What this means is that I'm not going to get stalled out of my Dracos from this point, because if I had to go for Draco on this, he probably could have just gone for subs until my Draco meter did not break his sub and if that happened I would have lost the game right there because um it would have come down to Infernape going for Mach Punch and then me having to Sucker Punch or or, or go for Poison Jab on the substitute playing mind games would not have been good so it didn't work out for me but it didn't go kind of horribly for me I lose my Infernape but if he had gone for Psy Shock, it would have been a lot worse. Now, I just go for Draco Meteor right here. I know for a fact he'll break the sub. I know the next one will break the sub as well. Not too worried about that. I just have to hit my Draco Meteors. And right here, he decides just to go for the attack. And he decides to go for a Dazzling Gleam and try to take out my Latias. Now, because of the HP investment I have on my Latias, he's actually... He, he, not going to be able to take me out with the Dazzling Gleam right now. I'm going to survive on 10, 11, sorry, 11 HP, drop a Draco, and take out the Mega Alakazam. But, what this means is that I have to face a Scizor, a Mesprit, and a Landorus Incarnate with my Needle Queen. Because, unfortunately, my Latias isn't looking too good on health. I've used two Draco Meteors already. It has no special attack anymore. He has up rocks. I can't really recover because I'm toxic. And he goes into the Scizor. And I'm just thinking, okay, I just have to drop a Draco again. I have to hope he doesn't have the Roost and just doesn't go for it. Well, I, I outspeed anyway, so I know he's going to BP there, so, so disregard that. But now it's my it's the captain of the Arcaniners versus half of the Bora Shadon fan. And can Captain bring it back? I have to pray he doesn't have the Roost right here. I can't go for the Fire Punch. If he BPs me, I die to Earth Power or the Earthquake. Have to go for Sucker Punch. Now I take him out. He goes into the Landorus, and right here, I'm gonna pause it, because I wanna talk about the Calc real quick. So, if he is max special attack, modest Earth Power, he has a 50-50 chance to KO me right here. It's a 50-50 roll. We calc it after the game. He, he, in fact, is that set. But I want to talk about what I should have done right here. I go for Ice Punch when I really should have gone for Sucker Punch. Um, Sucker Punch had a possibility to KO from that range, especially if, if he did not have a lot of investment in HP. I didn't have a reason to go for Ice Punch right here. I kind of risked the game by going for Ice Punch, but it was the heat of the moment. Um, I was really... At this point, I was like sitting at my DS going, Captain, putting the team on its back. Let's go, Captain. Gotta live. Gotta take the hit. And I honestly still expected the Earthquake right here, which I could have survived an Earthquake for sure. Um, but I see the Earth Power, and I'm thinking, okay, you just gotta survive. You just gotta survive, and Captain survives, puts the Arcaniners on the back. The whole Arcaniners nation on the shoulders of Captain right here. We go for Ice Punch, and we take out the Landorus Incarnate. And once again, 
Needle Queen has proven to be a thorn in Lars' side, just like it was the last game we had. He did win that game, but Needle Queen just threatened him the whole game, and this game as well. Needle Queen picking up four kills in this match and getting a little mini sweep at the end. Able to pick up the kill on the Mesper with the Sucker Punch, and Lars, holy shit, man, that was a close game. That was a close game. It came down to a 50-50 roll. Should have gone for Sucker Punch against the Landorus Incarnate. Didn't have a reason not to. But just, I mean, I knew he was Choice Scarf, so I really didn't have a reason not to. But I didn't, in case he was some random ass set. I don't know. I don't know what could have happened to me. But I went for Ice Punch. I should have gone for the Sucker Punch. Little misplay on my part. But in the end, the captain was not going to let the team down. Needle Queen was not going to lose the game for us. And that is why I franchised it. I knew no, it, Needle Queen would perform this season, and so far it has, and it really performed in this game. Taking out the Crawdoms, the Scizor, the Mesprit, and the Landorus. Just, wow. Wow. And Lars, it's a great game, man. Guys, if you do not know Lars, please, please go check out his channel. It's, oh, the link is in the description down below. And guys, we are now... Five and one in the most competitive GBA season yet. It's it's going good so far, guys. I'm not gonna lie, it, it is going good. We did bounce back after our our we did bounce back after the loss to MV and couldn't be happier with the team I drafted and just overall everything. So, anyways, guys, I'm Seth Thompson here, George D. Coach. If you are San Francisco Arcanines, and I'll see you guys next week against the Boston Red Sox. Peace out.